Hi, YouTube. Yeah, I don't have time to be an influencer. I have to teach second grade. Thanks. Bye. Hi, friends. Welcome back. It's week two. Let's get started with morning meeting. Good morning, friends. Today is Monday, March 23rd, 2020. I received so many positive emails last week. It seems like at-home learning is going smoothly. This week, we will meet in new ways. Have a great day. Riddle. What happens when a frog parks illegally? What happens when a frog parks illegally? It gets towed. <laughs> Love, Miss Andriani. All right, friends. <laughs> We're almost all the way through Women's History Month. So I wanted to highlight some pretty special women in our history. I recently ordered this book off of Amazon and I know it actually from last year, but I misplaced it. So I went ahead and I got a new one. It's called Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, part two. And it's a book that is full of different women throughout history and all the important things that they've done. So I kind of want to do what I would do in class and I, I'm just going to flip through it and I'm just going to stop at a random page and that's what we're going to read. All right. I'll close my eyes. Lillian Bland. She's an aviator. The first time Lillian was in a plane, it was her boyfriend. He took her up in his glider, but when she asked, can I fly it? He said no, and Lillian got really mad. Shortly after, Lillian's uncle Robert sent her a postcard of his own little plane flying over Paris. Lillian was in awe. She immediately wrote back begging him to take her aboard as a passenger, but her uncle said no as well. All right, I will have to do this my by myself, Lillian thought but at the time, it wasn't easy to find a plane in Ireland. No problem, she said to herself. I'll build one. Lillian read everything she could find by the Wright brothers and other famous aviators about how to build a plane. She succeeded in building a flyable biplane, an aircraft with two pairs of wings, then went on to build a full-scale glider, just like the other her boyfriend hadn't let her fly. She called her glider the Mayfly, because, as she said, it may fly, or it may not. Lillian fitted the Mayfly with an engine and found a nice level stretch of empty ground to use as a runway. She couldn't wait to see if her glider would get off the ground. The only problem was that the plane had no tank to hold the fuel. Never mind, she thought. I'll use an empty bottle instead. She did just that, and the plane soared along for about 10 seconds. The Mayfly, designed, built, and flow, flown by the amazing, inventive Lillian Bland, was the first powered aircraft in Ireland. There she is. Wow, she didn't take no for an answer. I love this book because it has so many different portraits and images, all by different artists. Okay, let's do another one. Close my eyes again. Ooh, she's got a very unique name. I hope I don't mispronounce it too much. Rigoberta Menchu Tum. She's a political activist. An activist is kind of someone that fights or stands up for something they believe in. Once there was a girl who was told she didn't matter. She lived high in the mountains of Guatemala, but she and her family had to work down in the valleys picking coffee beans. The plantation owners worked them hard and beat them if they did not pick fast enough. The workers were treated like slaves and were paid hardly anything. Your life is not worth a bag of beans, her bosses told her. 
My name is Rigoberta, she replied, and my life is worth just as much as yours. Ooh. Seems like she's about to do something important. Rigoberta was proud of her people and her culture. The Mayans of Guatemala could trace their history back to ancient times. They had rich and wonderful civilizations, but they had been forced into poverty and they were beaten and even killed by soldiers if they dared to protest. She started fighting for better conditions and equal rights for her people. She organized strikes and demonstrations. Although Rigoberta could not read or write, she spoke with such conviction that more and more people joined her cause. Many were taken away and killed, including Rigoberta's own parents and her brother. The government tried to silence her and the landowners tried to break her, but no one could crush her fearless spirit. A true hero, right? She insisted on telling her story, not because it was hers, but because it was the story of the oppressed indigenous peoples everywhere. Rigoberta played a large part in ending the civil war in Guatemala. For this and for her life's work, campaigning for the rights of the poor, she was awarded a Nobel Peace Prize. What an honor. There she is. Rigoberta. All right, let's do one more. I love this book so much. Okay, here we go. This is where I would like call on someone to tell me when to stop. Oh. Peggy Guggenheim, art collector. So many different kinds of heroes, right? We had an activist, an aviator, and now an art collector. Heroes come in all forms, right? Once upon a time, there was a girl who inherited a fortune. Her name was Peggy and her dad had died tragically when the Titanic sank. She was just 14 years old. Peggy loved travel, but even more than that, she loved art and artists. To meet as many artists as she could, she worked as a clerk in an avant-garde bookstore in Manhattan and later she moved to Paris, where she became friends with some of the world's most talented writers and painters. Peggy was on a mission to build a collection of the finest works of modern art in the world. She chose carefully, buying one painting a day with a very clear idea of who should be included in her collection. During the Second World War, Peggy was terrified that her priceless paintings would be destroyed by the bombs falling on Paris. She asked curators at the Louvre Museum to, for help, but they told her she didn't have anything worth protecting. Brock, Picasso, Klee, Dolly, Marguerite, not worth protecting? Peggy was, Peggy was outraged. She ended up storing her paintings in a friend's barn outside of Paris. After the war, Peggy moved to Venice, Italy. She floated around the city in her private gondola with her beloved dogs on her lap, always sporting a pair of jazzy sunglasses. Seems like that's what she's wearing there. She was driving force in the male-dominated art world of the 20th century, the Peggy Guggenheim Collection, one of the most important art museums in Italy is located in her far, former Venetian home, right on the banks of the Grand Canal. She kind of reminds me of another artist um, in history, one of my favorite artists in history, Frida Kahlo. Give me a connection sign if you know who Frida Kahlo is or you've seen her work. Maybe you saw her in Coco. She was in Coco, right? Yeah, she was in Coco. Um, so today, for our art, because you guys are doing so amazing at your fortune teller, so amazing at your tiny dinosaurs, I want to keep doing this art thing. I think it's really fun and you guys are really enjoying it. Um, I think I want to do a portrait of Frida Kahlo. It's a little more challenging than the tiny dinosaur. So get your pencils, your paper, and let's get started. Um, you may have noticed that I have like this new setup my new classroom um, just because I want to make sure that you guys have the best learning experience during at-home learning um, so I got this new whiteboard from a buy nothing group on Facebook actually and it's just a group that um, trades and gives things away for free it's really good for the environment and for your wallet highly recommend let's get started okay <gasps> Whoa. The first step in this drawing process is to actually divide your paper into four squares. So since you guys are gonna be working with a 
piece of paper, you'll fold it in half French fry and then fold it in half again. Um, so it makes four squares. But since I'm showing you on a whiteboard, I'm just going to draw like an X. And the reason why um, you do this is to help you with the drawing process. And I don't want you to use a pen or a pencil on your paper and draw a T like this on yours because that'll mess up the portrait. So make sure you just fold. All right, let me get a marker that works. My supplies are kind of limited because I haven't been able to get new ones. So please just be understanding. Okay, I found these really old markers at my mom's house. They're probably 15 years old. They smell really old. Okay, so step one in the portrait of Frida Kahlo is to make her kind of like her forehead. And her forehead looks kind of like, like a tent. So you're gonna go up and then you're gonna meet in the middle. Then you're gonna do her jaw. And remember, since you guys are watching me do this, you can always hit pause if you feel like I'm going too fast, um, or you can even rewind if you want to see that step over again. So we have her forehead and her jaw, and now it all comes together and it's making her face. See that? All right, next I'm gonna do her neck and her shoulders. And I will definitely be getting new whiteboard markers. Um, it's kind of hard to buy things these days. I'm sure you guys are fully aware. So I'm working with what I got. Um, we're doing a necklace. And feel free to like erase things or adjust things. Remember, this is like a quick sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect this time around. You can go ahead and make changes as you go or at the end when you um, color it. So we have her face, her neck, her shoulders, beautiful necklace. Now I'm gonna give her some ears. And her hair. Now Frida wore her hair up um, in like braids a lot. Uh, maybe I can insert a picture. But she had her hair up and then the braids would kind of connect at the top. Um, and sometimes she would add beautiful flowers into her hair and that's what we're gonna do. So we're not gonna do the braid, but we're gonna really focus on flowers. Now you can actually draw flowers if you're a good artist or you can just do a bunch of circles. Um, your choice depends on how much detail you wanna add to yours. As you guys learned from my tiny dinosaur tutorial, I'm not a very good artist, so I'm sticking to circles instead of flowers. Okay, so she has her flower crown, her necklace. Next step is her eyes. This is the trickiest part. And with the eyes, it's important that you draw the eyes at this line. So it's like footballs. And then her actual eyeball, I like to do it at the top of the eye, not really in the middle. Oops, her eye. Kinda looks like she's looking sideways. Okay, her eyes, and I'm gonna do her nose and her mouth. It's looking pretty good. Last step is her signature bold brow. I love a bold brow. So it's gonna go from the corner of her eye right to the middle. And she actually had one eyebrow and she was okay with that. And it was amazing and super artistic and totally natural. So I'm not, I'm making sure that it connects in the middle. And drawing like hair, right? This is just my interpretation. 
So she has her bold bro. And there you have it, a portrait of Frida Kahlo. Super important woman in our history. Thanks so much for following along and um, I hope that you have a good day and I can't wait to see you guys later on in the week. Bye.